Hey there, it's Zeb again. In this video, I want to talk about the constrained optimization that consumers face if they have what we call a Leontief utility function. So this is a utility function that's named after the economist who first thought of the idea, Wassily Leontief. And this is a utility function that is most commonly used when we're thinking about goods that are complements. However, just because you see a utility function like this, doesn't mean that the goods have to be complements, but in general, if, well, if in all cases, if goods are complements, uh, then this is likely to be the utility function that you would see. So let's see what we have. Well, this utility function says that our utility that we get by consuming some amount x1 of good one and some amount x2 of good two is going to be the minimum of ax1 bx2. And of course, a and b here are both we're going to assume strictly positive real numbers. So they are uh, at least zero. Now, when you have this kind of utility function, what you really care about is the smallest amount of either AX1 or BX2, because it's gonna be the minimum of this or of this. Now, if you're trying to figure out what the optimal consumption bundle is, you're trying to figure out how much should the consumer buy of each good. And, of course, they don't want to spend any more than they have to to get a desired or a given level of utility. So in order to do this, it makes the most sense for the consumer to set these two equal to each other. So to set AX1 equal to BX2. Because if one of them's larger than the other, then that means you've bought too much of that good and you could cut back a little bit and buy more of the other and increase your utility. So kind of optimally, right, this should be the case. So optimally, we're going to have AX1 equal to BX2. And of course, that's what we're trying to find is the optimal consumption bundle. So this is pretty easy. This is a little easier than our video on the linear utility function. So the first thing to do here is just solve for one of the goods in terms of the other. So let's go ahead and solve for, um, let's solve for x2. So if we solve for x2, we get that a over b x1 is equal to x2. All right, now that's, that's telling us something. Now the thing that we can do if we want to be able to figure out how much of good one we should buy is plug this into our budget constraint. So remember the formula for the budget line? So our budget constraint or our budget line is just going to be P1X1 plus P2X2 equals M. Because both of these are goods, we like them both, we know we're going to fully exhaust our income uh, on this problem. So we have just found that X2 is equal to A over B X1. So we can rewrite our budget line this way. So we get P1 X1 plus P2. Now we plug in our result for uh, what we found X2 to be. So we get A over B X1 equals M. And so now we can solve for X1 and exactly how much of x1 we want to buy subject to the or given written only in terms of the parameters of the model right that is the price of good one the price of good two a and b and our income m so now we just want to solve for x1 so we can do this we can see that this is just x1 times p1 plus p2 times a over b Right. This is exactly the same thing. I've just factored out that x1 and that this is equal to m. So now we can just divide in order to get our consumption bundle x1 star. So x1 star, the optimal consumption bundle, is going to be our income m divided by p1 plus, and I really don't like that fraction being after the p2, a over b P2. And so there you have it. That was relatively easy. All right. Now we can do exactly the same thing trying to find the optimal amount of good two. 
We'll start back here at this optimal condition and we will solve now for x1. So we see that x1 is going to be equal to b over a x2. All right, we just divided both sides by a and so we got that x1 is equal to b over a x2. Now we can plug this into our budget constraint. So let's move this up. All right, so hopefully that gives us enough room. So we find that P1, X1, and now we've got X1 written in terms of X2. So we've got P1 times B over A X2 is equal to P2 X2. Oops, not equal to. Of course, that's not what I meant. I meant plus. I was just checking to make sure you were following along. And that's going to be equal to M. All right, so we can do the exact same thing here. We factor out that X2. And so we get that X2 times B over A P1 plus P2 is equal to M. And so we can come over and we can solve for the optimal amount of x2. We get x2 star is equal to m over b over a p1 plus p2. So that's the optimal amount of both goods. Now we can rewrite this. We can write it as we usually would. Well, that didn't work at all. So we can rewrite our consumption bundle as x star equals now the optimal amount of good one. So that's going to be m over p1 plus a over b p2. And then the optimal amount of good two is going to be m over b over a p1 plus p2. And so there we have it. We have the consumer's optimal bundle in the case of the Leon TF preferences. Now let's think about this in terms of indifference curves and a budget constraint. So here we have X1 and X2. Now we know that with Leon TF style preferences, our indifference curves are going to look something like this. All right, so there's our indifference curves. Now imagine that the budget line looks something like this. All right, imagine that those points touch right there. Then this, what we have just found, is going to be the solution for this. So this is going to be our x1 star. Right, this is this whole term here is going to be x1 star. And then this term is going to be x2 star, which is this quantity. All right, so the only time that we would really have anything other than that would be if the price of one of the goods was zero or if one of the goods' prices were infinite. Um, then it could be that we would be okay consuming more. So, for instance, if good two were free then our budget line could look something like this. All right, but assuming that that's not the case, then we don't really have to worry about that weird case. So if we're dealing with strictly positive prices, then that's not going to be uh, a concern. So really quickly, let me give you kind of a bonus. So related to the Leon TF utility function, we could have a utility function that looks like this. Utility of x1, x2 is equal not to the minimum, but to the maximum of AX1, BX2. Now, if we have this, this is an incredibly easy uh, function, uh, an incredibly easy one to solve, because what we want to do then is we just want to maximize one of these things. So which one should we choose to maximize? Well, that's going to depend on the kind of bang for the buck. And so the bang for the buck is going to be your 
marginal rate of substitution, or well, in this case, we really don't have one. The, the, the marginal utility that you get from one of the goods, right, um, divided by the price that you would pay for it. That's kind of your bang for your buck. So if, for instance, A over P1, the bang for the buck of good one, is greater than the bang for the buck uh, for good two, B over P2, then what should you do? Well, you want to buy only good one. So your optimal consumption of good one then, in that case, is going to be just all of your income spent on good one. If that's not the case, right? If on the other hand, you have that A over P1 is less than B over P2, that is the bang for the buck is better for good two, then you should spend only uh, on good two. Now, um, you'll see that this is kind of a similar case, right? Your solution here is gonna be a similar case to what you have in the linear uh, utility preference or the linear utility function. So I'll leave you to that video uh, to think about what this would look like. But in this case, essentially, you're gonna to wanna to set one of these to be your entire budget, right? And um, you're gonna to wanna to spend nothing on the other. So it's just going to depend um, on which one gives you the better bang for the buck. So of course, well, I'll go ahead and, and, and write it out. So if A over P1 is greater than, uh, so let's actually write this out a little more formally. So X star, that is our optimal consumption bundle, is going to be equal to, so, if the bang for the buck is bigger for good one, then you want to only buy good one. So we're going to spend M over P1 here. We're going to buy zero of good two. If A over P1 is greater than B over P2. And of course, if A over P1 is less than B over P2, then we want to buy none of good one and spend everything m over p2 on good two so what do we get if these two are equal a over p1 the bang for the buck for good one is equal to b over p1 uh, b2 the bang for the buck for good two well if that's the case then we really don't care right we would be happy with either m over p1 comma zero or zero over uh, zero comma m over p2 right so either one of those would be acceptable in this case right but you certainly don't want to divide up your consumption among those two bundles so that's really uh among those two goods so that's really the the, the only difference between this and the ordinary case with linear utility function. Anyway, just thought I'd show that. So here you have now seen the consumer's choice problem solved for Leontief utility function and for the related uh, function where we are trying to maxim we're trying to maximize uh, either AX1 or BX2. So anyway, hope this helped uh, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.